There are some people that have asked me about uh, how to do sweating. I think one of my recent videos showed me sweating some pipe and I, uh, I've been doing this for so long that it doesn't dawn on me that there are uh, a lot of people out there that don't know how to do this and every guy learns from wherever he learned from and everyone does it a different way. Um, so just to be clear, when you're sweating pipe, and I know a lot of people are going to PEX and this probably doesn't, isn't really too relevant, but when you're sweating pipe, copper pipe specifically, all these things have to be both deburred and sanded. So all your connectors, these 90s that I have on here, um, the straight pipe coming up, all have to be sandpapered and uh, yeah, so on the inside and the outside, they have to be sandpapered. Then you use what's called flux, and you put a little flux. Well, I say a little bit. Um, it's kind of pasty, and you can actually put as much as on. There's no such thing as, oh, we have too much flux going on. So because of that, I don't really worry that I have too much. But, but everywhere, eventually, everywhere that your heat's going to go, including on the inside of this valve, is going to get some flux and you can be liberal with it there's no no harm no foul these end pieces as well get some flux on it so you're double fluxing as it were because you already have some inside and now you have some outside and now you have some outside here and then we're going to put some inside on the elbows and there's enough connections on here that I don't feel like it's imperative that I show every single sweat process. I'm going to fire up my torch here in a minute and go through that. Uh, if I can get that on there. I actually sweated on my cap earlier, so I think these pipes are stiff because of the heat. But anyway, be that as it may, hold on a second, let me make sure I got a good bite in there. You can actually see from the inside. Alright, so I got that put back in there correctly and oh my bad so let me take this off of here I'm going to show you uh, the bottom part because this is where the tub was already got sweated in usually I put it in what's called you know like a like a drip pipe that goes down probably it's just a piece of copper with a cap up the end and that's to catch any debris and things like that that happen to get in a drip tube if you will Usually I put that on there. I don't put the factory piece that actually would be put in here if you're not. Yeah, so I already pre-sweated that in. Um, that's important because if you're building just a shower and you don't need the tub part, then you're definitely going to put that in prior to all this other stuff. Because you have to understand you're putting a lot, a lot of heat on everything that you're doing here. These are brass. This is the whole brass valve. And brass takes a lot more heat than does copper. Simply drop it in there. Know that you have about a three quarter inch. Usually it's a good idea to mark it to know exactly where you're going to bottom out at. You know, I can kind of feel it as it drops down where my bottom is. So not that big of a deal for me. However, it may be for some people. So the same thing. You want to... Put some type of marker know where you're going to bottom out and i believe it's going to be right on this dark line right here where i'm bottoming out and make sure that you have solid yep right on that dark line so that's where i bottom out at same as over here and i'm going to check my bottom right here perhaps uh, i'll get it all the way down <laughs> sometimes you gotta wrestle there it goes it dropped down so I could clearly feel it dropping down. Then this top part is a lot easier if I had if I had gone up there and I had released this part because it's already solid in the wall and I don't want to mess with it, it would be a lot easier. But you can see clearly that I have at least half an inch of room in there that it's going to drop into. So because I'm fraying clear, I know that I can kind of manipulate it in and get my half inch going inside of the pipe. And then it should be right where I want it. If this is the time any adjustments are done, this is the time you want to level it out and keep a little torpedo level almost everywhere you go because if you look at the bubble I'm slightly off and then if I just turn it slightly like that now I'm level and then that's exactly where I want it to start doing my sweating part so the thing about these brass valves as I said already they take a lot to heat oh by the way 
and I forgot. Every valve you have has a cartridge, and every cartridge has either rubber and or plastic involved in it. So always, always, always take out your cartridge. My cartridge is sitting down there currently. I took it out and I set it down exactly the way that I found it so that I, there's no way that I can mess it up going back in. But take those out because you're going to have all that stuff going in there. When you put this much heat, especially on brass, you're going to have a lot, a lot of melted plastic and rubber and you're going to be saying curse words and all that stuff and everything. So what I normally do as a rule is I start down here at the bottom. And the reason I start at the bottom because heat transfers to all your pipes and as the heat transfers although it has a long length up here it's not going to transfer up there but i want to make sure that i go backwards so as i'm going backwards with heat here then i start going up to this elbow ie 90 i put heat on that that preheats my brass so that when i get over to my brass i don't have to have fire on it as long as if i started from cold that's just my personal take on it um there's not much i can tell you as i'm sweating this pipe oh so whatever, how would I explain this? So, so the solder that you're using um, gets attracted by heat. It wants to get sucked up into the heat. So whatever you're trying, in other words, you wouldn't put the heat directly on here, you wouldn't go this direction. Wherever you want the, heat, the, the solder to get sucked up into is the object, the opposite end is the object that you want to put the heat on. So if I want the heat, sorry, if I want the solder to travel up that way, then obviously I'm putting the heat down here if in opposition if I want the heat or the solder to go in here then I put the heat down here so you're putting in the middle here is basically where I'm doing with the connection because there's no way to differentiate between top and bottom So just when you start when you start seeing the solder getting sucked in, that's about as much heat as you want to put on it. Then you bend your wire with your thumb or whatever you can to make sure you get the back. Sometimes you don't have as much access to the back end of it. And a lot of people are really focused on getting their solder, their sweat connection as you were as I were. Um, nice and neat looking. I don't really care about that. This is going to be encapsulated in a wall. I could care less who sees it later on. My main focus is to actually make sure that the heat connection works, that the solder, if it's slopped around like it is currently, that it's not a big deal. And then get yourself a mirror. I don't need a mirror in this situation because I can clearly see behind it, but it's going to show you your sweat connection at the bottom and the top with a mirror and tell you whether or not you have enough solder. Uh, form over beauty. That's my take on <laughs> it. I don't really care how it looks. One thing I don't enjoy at all, turning on the water and finding, finding out that I have a little pinhole leak going on. And then you got to shut down the water, drain everything out, start from scratch, you know, use a little sandpaper, emery cloth or whatever, you know, sand off your connection where, where your pinhole leak is at, and then start from scratch again. I don't want that to happen because I don't want to go through that process. Been there, done that, don't like doing it. So now I know definitively, regardless of what it looks like, that we are watertight. Again, I want my solder to travel this way and that way, so I'm putting the heat on the corner. flashlight do the same thing on every connection I want to do the same thing so I clearly have enough solder on both the top and the bottom so that one's done as you see it takes about 
10, 20 seconds to do one of these. Flashlight mirror again. I clearly have enough solder on top and bottom of that one too. I have heated up the valve by now, which means I need a whole lot less heat than I would normally have, as I said before. Same thing applies here on your valve, and by the way, um, heating these up with propane is probably not the best idea. I don't recall a time, maybe when I, I don't know, in the 80s when I first started doing soldering, sweating pipe, I may have used propane a couple of times, but I switched over to map gas many, many years ago. Map gas has a higher heat uh, content that comes out. Um, the tip matter sometimes to get to generate more heat but also the gas matter. And so propane is probably not the best type of heat. And what I'm doing here, I'm just wetting everything down. I'm doing that because sometimes these little valves, these, and I love these stops that they have built in, integrated into some of these fixtures. Um, some of, sometimes these stops have rubber gaskets, rubber O-rings and stuff like that. I wasn't able to get these stops out. Um, they were kind of locked in there and I didn't want to mess with it too much, but because they do have rubber and stuff like that, you don't want to burn the rubber, although I probably did, possibly on this one. Sometimes they don't have rubber. Either which way, you want all that water to flow. So these valves are actually locked in the open position, and open meaning all the way out as opposed to all the way in, which means that any of the heat that I generated, hopefully most of it went outside inside of the valve and just dissipated through that. But we'll know later on when I try and turn these off. What some guys do is they'll drape a wet rag over this area. But if you have a wet rag over this area, then it's really hard to get heat over in this area, and you're still close to the shutoff anyway. So there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. You kind of figure out your own way as you go along. As you saw, there's probably some tips and tricks and stuff like that that I missed telling you. One of them is that as you're putting the solder on, and you saw it got drawn in, so I'm, I'm adding a little bit of solder, and the solder just sits there in a little ball, and then I took my solder away, and I waited, it, I waited for that little drip to get drawn in. As soon as it gets drawn in, you know you have enough heat, and then that's when you start just kind of moving it around front to back, and yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. It, for me, it's very second nature. If I weren't talking and taking my time and all that stuff, all this would have been done like in 10 minutes, from very bottom to the very top, and all it, everything has to do with this brass to valve, I could sweat in in probably less than 10 minutes. But because I'm talking, it's taking longer. So it's second nature to me, but for you, yeah, I don't know. And all that excess stuff will come right off. Put a little heat on it. If you don't like it, you can actually scrub it off with a brush as you're putting heat on it. You know, it'll, it'll come off. But like I said, you know, I'm, I'm more about form over looks than anything else. But, you know, that's basically it. That's how to 
as they say, sweat pipe. I don't call it soldering pipe because soldering, yeah, it's kind of the same, but the sweating is what I'm doing. So the next step you would do if you had a plug, which this one didn't come with, it only came with the valve, but if you had a plug, you would put it on there temporarily until you're done with your tiling and all that stuff. But also more to the point, the plug would go on there, you turn on the water, make sure that all your connections are good, that they're watertight. But I don't have a plug, so I'm gonna wait probably about 20 or 30 minutes for all of this to, mm, it's, still, it's still hot. You don't wanna melt all that stuff. So I'm gonna wait 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes, and I'm gonna put that cartridge back in, lock it down, turn on the water, make sure I got no leaks. And that's as simple as that gets. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.